Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler video. Today I am in the man closet. I don't have a man room because of Vancouver condo living, but I, I do have a man closet. This is where I do all my fly tying, hang out, uh, get my gear ready. Um, and today we're going to be looking at uh, a coho pattern that I use, one that I used for guiding for many years. Uh, it's one of my favorites for non-moving slow coho pools and it's called the Poisoned Arrow. Uh, the arrow style pattern is something that was developed by Andre. I'm gonna put the links up here to his YouTube site. Check that out, he's got some cool patterns for you guys. Um, but this is the sort of tweak that I do on it. Uh, we did a video earlier called What's in My Coho Box? And there were a couple questions when I was talking about arrow style patterns. So what is an arrow style pattern? Well, it's quite simple. It is basically a pattern that has a flash material tied out the back um, that looks sort of like the shaft of an arrow. And then we wrap a pommered chenille of many different colors uh, around the top. And that sort of makes this arrow shape to things. This uh, Today I'm going to show you guys my dirty water version or one where I have aggressive fish. And then I'm going to show you my clear water version or ones where I have really picky fish. Um, and obviously the back end of November we are today. Uh, that'll probably be useful for you for the next month. So let's jump into it. So first we're going to uh, look at the hook we're going to use, and we're going to use a Gamagatsu hook. And this is the L11S H3. Now, funnily enough, a bonefish guide showed me this hook, um, but it's a salmon hook. It's a bonefish hook in the sense that the bonefish guides found it and are using it uh, for really corally situations where their hook takes a lot of abuse. And uh, it's kind of ironic that a bonefish guide showed a salmon guide about a hook, but it's one of my favorites. It's really, really durable. And uh, it, it's relatively cost effective too. It's not a cheap hook by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not a super expensive one either. And uh, now, um, yeah, big shout out to Mike and Kenny over in Hawaii for showing this one to me. So now we're gonna start off with our thread and uh, we're going to use uh, 140 UTC. Uh, the thread quite honestly doesn't matter. I have guys picking, uh, yeah, they come in and they spend hours sort of talking about thread or looking at a YouTube and saying, this is the exact thread I need. It doesn't particularly matter, but kind of try to match your fishing conditions, match the sort of style your pattern and 140 seems to work well for me. Now this is the trick when you start off, don't just wrap onto this hook. You're going to have this thing blow up. I, I did some loose wraps here. I'm going to take my nails and I'm going to jam all of them up into the head of that uh, bead. That's going to give me a good base. Now I'm going to do it again, give myself a little bit of space. I'm just going to build sort of a loose thread wrap here of maybe about a half dozen uh, wraps, maybe even a little bit more. And then we're going to do that again. We're going to take that and we're going to jam that right up into the head of that bead. That's going to add a bunch of durability um, and keep this from sliding. This style of pattern can slide if it's not built up well. Um, so keep that in mind when you're tying it. Now, the secret sauce in my version of this pattern, we call it the poisoned arrow because there's a little bit of an addition to it, is that I build up a much bigger base along my fly. A lot of people will just start sort of uh, two millimeters down from the base, and that's great. That's a wicked pattern. I used that pattern for years. That's how Andre ties it. But I like to build up a little bit more durability in my pattern, and with that, I'm going to add... Uh, something that's a little bit different than other patterns. So here we go. We're going to go back. We're going to go back not all the way to the hook point, but we're still going to give ourselves about two millimeters of wrap. And we're going to wrap up here. We're going to build um, a nice thick bump. And this bump is multi-purposed. It's going to, again, uh, be add a lot of durability to this pattern, but it's also going to be where I add uh, an accent to this pattern that I think makes a little bit of difference, or maybe the, maybe the fish don't think it, but at least I do. And there's something to be said for confidence, having a secret material in your pattern. And what is that material? Well, that's glow uh, crystal flash in this case, but any glow material works. I swear that adding a touch of glow into your pattern uh, affects the fish. I, I don't know what it is, especially when it comes to coho and, and to a large extent, any of the salmon species, it has to do something with their eyes. And I'm not a, uh, an eye doctor, so I couldn't explain it to you, but uh, I've had numerous patterns that have added a little bit of glow material, 
and uh, seem to make a noticeable difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off, uh, that's not enough, that's four strands. I'm going to take a few more here. I'm going to get six strands of this glow material. And we're going to tie that in as a tail. Let's get it all prepared here so I don't get a mess up. And we're going to go over that bump, tying it in right here. So there she is. Now that's my tail, but we're gonna take three strands off of that tail, which divides it in half, so there's probably only three or four left. And we're gonna use this to wrap up our body. This is gonna add a, a highlight to this fly. And you'll see it when you see it in the water, you'll just sort of catch a glint of this glow in the dark material. And funnily enough, if you did fish it at night back in the day when we did, uh, you could uh, see this glowing from a long way away. Obviously, a lot of the night fishing stuff has been cut out because you aren't allowed to fish half hour after sundown. Oh, it lost a wrap there, but we'll get it. And there we go. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. I sometimes like some of the chartreuse popping through on this. Now I'm getting messy here, bear with. Fix that guy move my vice around this angle is really off. Oh, you guys have probably also noticed that I tie backwards, which is uh, funny. I learned at a young age and I was completely self-taught and I learned the wrong way. And then by the time I figured out that it was the wrong way and had been to a, hang out with a bunch of really great fly tires, I was already at the point where there was no point in trying to relearn it. Um, so I apologize if you guys are trying to follow with and it's totally the wrong direction. So there we have the body. Now we're going to do one more thing to add durability here. We are going to add um, some solar res. I love this stuff. It's super easy to use, super um, good for making your fly durable. But in this case, it actually adds sort of a cool uh, translucency to the pattern. We're just going to add a relatively big gob here on top. And I'm using the thin here because I don't need to build it up too much. You could use a thick and make this really heavy. And then I'm going to go in with my needle and I'm just going to make sure that it's spaced all the way cleanly around, get some decent coverage. And uh, when we see this um, in the water, it sort of gives it a little bit of a glow to this pattern. Uh, the uh, um, glow in the dark material popping through the solar eyes. And then I'm going to get my nuclear light. Sorry, I'm going to blind you guys. This light's awesome. It nukes everything. You do want to look away from it so it doesn't cook your eyes as I'm getting you guys. I don't think it's going to translate through the video. And so there we go. Real short, really good. And she is cured. I've got a little piece poking off here. Sometimes that happens. I missed him. And uh, okay, so now we're ready for the wing. We've got our little bit of secret sauce, the glow in the front here. And we're gonna finish, get set up there. And now I'm gonna use minnow belly. Now in this port, this is sort of the shaft of the arrow. You can use a bunch of different materials. Minnow belly is great. This is UV minnow belly. Um, but I really like angel hair as well in this. Uh, Flashaboo works great. There's a whole bunch of options for you guys out there. Just get creative. But minnow belly is definitely one of the winners for me. And so here we go. We're gonna make sure that's all one length. And I'm not gonna use too much. Um, we don't want this too heavy. I mean, maybe if I was tying a really dirty water design to this pattern, I would. Now we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna have a big chunk pointing up. And then I'm gonna push this all around the pattern, sort of smush it around, trying to get as much coverage. And then my first loop, I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose, just like we would spin a deer hair or uh, any material, we're gonna sort of spin this so we get some coverage all the way around the pattern. And there's our first shot. Now we've got all this stuff out the top. I'm gonna to use that to sort of space um, the material around a little bit better. And then I'm gonna push it back. And again, I want it sort of evenly spaced all around uh, the shank of the fly or the glow um, bump that we've built. And then I'm gonna wrap it back so there we go, there's the shaft of our pattern. It can be fairly sparse. And now we're gonna jump into the uh, arrowhead. And for that, we're going to use uh, Palmer chenille. I think in the video on what's in my fly box, I called this something else and had to correct myself. But Palmer chenille is great. It's sort of a one directional uh, flash material. It comes in a bunch of different colors. And I encourage you to tie this pattern in a bunch of different colors. And when you're on that coho pool, be cycling through them. It's very common that I might cycle through 
you know, a half dozen variations of this pattern before I could get it to work. Now I'm picking off maybe about a millimeter of the base of this material so I can tie it in. And I'm going to tie it in very tight to the bead. Now, many of you might say, hey, you're not leaving enough room. Well, this style of pattern, you get a little, get away with being tight. And actually, if you give yourself too much room, I really think it makes the pattern look like garbage and sort of be unproportioned. Again, who knows if the fish care, but uh, I, I, I think it does. So I'm leaving as little room as possible, making sure my thread's at the end. And then we're going to palmer this material. We're going to wrap it around, making sure all the flash fibers are pointed back towards the arrow or the shaft of the hook as I got tangled up in my bobbin here, bear with. And we're gonna give it about five wraps and I'm gonna go right up to the bead on this pattern. And I'm gonna really dig it in so it binds in underneath that bead as best I can. And we're gonna do about four or five wraps at most and then I'm gonna tie her off. I'm gonna do one, and we're going to skip in behind and go to, that was messy, bear with. Okay, so there she's tied in. I'm going to pull this back. And now I'm going to pull all the materials back and I'm going to do five wraps. One, two, three. And this is smushing down all the little bits and pieces hanging out. Four, and one more, five. But I'm not going to leave those five wraps. I'm going to back off two. That'll help me smush and sort of align everything. I'm going to use those two wraps later on after I clip this guy off as tight as I can. And again, I'm going to pull everything down. I'm going to add those two wraps in again. It's, it's a very common technique and one that's very useful to do about six or seven wraps, get everything laid down when you're happy with it, back off to, and it's going to help you not build up a really crazy bulky head to your flies. And that's it. We're going to come in with our whip finisher. And again, I wrap backwards, so this is going to look weird to you guys. We're going to do a two wrap on the whip finish, and we're going to hit it again for another two wrap. Let it bind in a little bit there. Now, you don't need to hit this with any head cement um, or uh, UV resin, but if you got it, you might as well. It's going to add some durability to things, so I'll go ahead and hit that with my hardest hull. Again, you could do this with UV, but a little tap of this stuff is a nice option to add some durability. And there we have it. We need, oh, I guess we need to cut off the tail. And so we're going to come in here and we want to leave that tail relatively long, but not quite as long as the hook shank. She's just a touch shorter than the hook shank is usually where I go for it. And there we have it. There is the arrow finished. Now I'm going to walk you guys through my uh, low water condition or picky fish condition when that's in purple. We're going to do that in high speed because there's no point hearing me talk through that whole thing. But uh, yeah. As always, if you guys like what you saw here, uh, check out Andre's uh, uh, YouTube channel. It's up in the uh, it's in the links in the description below. Uh, we obviously do the Friday Fishing Report every week, so check that out. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and we'll catch you in the next fly time tutorial.